A friend once told me, location, 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 and that resonates with me very strongly, not in because of where I care to live, but in my real estate space for my desk. I value my desk space, so usually full-size keyboards are no-go, but what happens when I need a numpad? Well, there are plenty of cheapo, plastic, non-mechanical, and mechanical number pads online, but I wanted one with a little more class, and this all aluminum KBD Fans Pad V2 was exactly what I was looking for. It's not the highest class of designer mechanical number pads, but I think it's the best step before you get to that point. And before we get to talking about this number pad, let's briefly talk about the sponsor for this episode, Zeal PC, where you can get some awesome Zeal V2 switches. His newly designed V2 switches are super tactile and super fun to use, and they feel better than ever before. Check them out at my affiliate link, zealpc.net slash man of interests. This here is a little nifty numpad that I requested from KD fans to review. It's an all aluminum delight. The USB port in the rear is centered and accepts mini USB. The aluminum plate is nicely top mounted and feels pretty good for typing, for a number pad at least. Unfortunately, the plate doesn't support switch top removal, which normally for most keyboards, I would prefer it not to have it, but for something like a number pad, I think it'd be a nice touch for those who want to test out different switches and different modifications in a small form factor without desoldering. The high profile sides are nice and exactly what we're looking for. I think low profile numpads will look on average pretty bad. So something with a chunkier look like this is well appreciated on my desk with all my keyboards. On the bottom, there are four rubber pads and four very deep Phillips screws that hold the case together. Note that the two rear ones are pretty deep unless you have maybe an eyeglass repair kit. You might need to get bits with uh, longer and thinner shanks to access these screws easily to disassemble your case. And that happened with me. The anodization is decent, although not the best I felt. If I had to judge it, I'd say it's about equivalent anodization to the Tina 60% keyboard that they have on their site. It's no TX pad, but on the other hand, it's only $80 and pretty obtainable. The simple look of this KBD fans pad ensures it doesn't steal the spotlight on your desk from your keyboard, and instead it can surely complement it. The number pad is available in black, silver, gray, or red, and you can use it to match other KBD Fans products as well with the same anodizations. Pretty cool if you want your whole KBD Fan ecosystem set up on your desk. So let's open her up, the four screws in the back, and let's see inside. Inside we see a boot mapper client compatible PCB, as well as some interesting sights. Firstly, the numpad does have holes for soldering two extra switches next to the top row, which makes me believe that they could have a newer numpad in the future that will allow you to use those two extra spots. In fact, the more I look at this, it seems the PCB is designed for a case that they haven't made yet because there are SMD RGBs for underglow. Hmm. Well, the number pad supports multiple layouts, which makes it very versatile based on your needs. You could have the whole pad be one U keys if you need a lot of shortcuts or macros or whatever else you want to use to program it. You can have it to be a traditional number pad or an 1800 style number pad. The two extra keys on top could be a single two U key as well, if you desire. In day to day use, I honestly don't touch this too much, but when I do, I use it a bit differently, I'd say. Traditional number pads are kept on the right, as they are with full-size keyboards, but in wanting to save space, I want to have more mouse movement and mouse flexibility, so I use it on the left side with my left hand to give me more mouse room. I've also wanted to do this to prepare myself for the Southpaw full-size keyboard when that comes in. The typing angle on the number pad is fine. It doesn't really matter what key set I put on it, it's pretty easy to work with as I go along, since all I'm doing is just jamming through strings of numbers. For my KOD fan pad, I decided to keep it quiet so it would complement whatever board it was using instead of, you know, being out of place. And for that effect, I went with 78 gram Zeal Xilence. Um, and they're nice when stringing through long sets of numbers. I haven't used the numpad too much aside from the lot of number crunching, but hopefully in the future, I'm gonna be converting it to a shortcut pad for Adobe Premiere, so as I do more video editing, I can access different things I need a bit easier. I think that's gonna find much more use for me than just being a number pad. And I can set different layers for that if I still need to type in a lot of numbers. It's hard to say for the use case of this. I mean, not just because it's a number pad, but because who is this for? Um, at $80 for a number pad, you're starting to venture out 
to the point where people might ask why. I know we're already in a kind of a silly hobby of people spending a lot for keyboards, but I don't think it's as easy to stomach $80 for a numpad. People are spending fractions of that amount on macro pads, spending fractions amount on even keyboards. So for $80 for a number pad kit unbuilt, it's kind of hard. And you know, with that, it comes with some complaints. Um, the plate, uh, the plate fit was extremely tight for the switches. So getting my switches in was a pain. The top and bottom don't line up as perfectly as I hoped, although it's passable. And one of the biggest things back is that price. For all of this, I really think it would have been more palatable at around $60, not the $80. I don't know if that's too big to ask, but compared to so many of the great price points they have for so many products along their line, $80 for Normpad I think is a bit much to ask for. And that's probably its only downside right now. But this number pad, until I find a nicer one I want, will be a staple on my desk. Despite my minor complaints, it'll still get its fair share of use. I think that it'll be on my desk for quite a while. I don't think I will want anything else for the near future, mostly because I'm not going to want to spend so much on a number pad in the future. Hope you like this review. If you like this content, you know, feel free to subscribe, like. If you like what I do in this channel, feel free to check out the other videos. And if you want to support me, check out my Patreon link down below and feel free to hang out with me on Discord. Link down below as well. Uh, thank you for watching. Thank you for the sponsors of this episode. See you guys next episode.